this is another episode of Jim's Love and Garden. Okay, so as you can see, the <coughs> the rain has really brought on the beans, and the, this uh, this this row of uh, climbing beans here is absolutely laden. I don't know if you can see them, but they're literally um, covered. And if you go further down, there's loads more down here. Now, so far, I've done the far side of the beans, and uh, believe it or not, I've already picked a bowlful. So uh, just off just off that row, which is probably about um, 12 foot long. Um, I've got this many beans, so that just gives you an idea of, of how many beans are actually on there. So I'll probably get probably about half as much again, if not twice this, by the time I finish picking them all today. Okay, as I've not done a tour for a few weeks, I just thought I'd uh, quickly go around and show you how things are getting on. So in the greenhouse, this side, um, these are the um, money maker. Uh, tomatoes here, these are the garden's delight. Uh, we've picked quite a few as you can see we've got some really nice um, fruit trusses uh, on here and we've, we have had quite a few ripen you can see there's one at the back there. Uh, I've picked the majority of the ones that have um, uh, ripened already but um, the garden's delight, I only grew two of those but, but they've done really well. The, um, the, the money maker as always have done really well I've already picked about six kilos of tomatoes as you can see through here there's 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 plenty of rotten and they're a good size so those have done really well on the other side of the greenhouse a bit of a different different term story really we've got these are the alicante tomatoes and for some reason this year they've really not done too well um, here we've got another two, obviously I had the uh, the tomato plant that was there, I pulled out because it's got this kind of mildew rot on it. As you can see this one here as well has pretty much done the same, so you can see the bottom there, the bottom of the um, the, uh, the main stalks rotted off. Uh, and this one's done something similar about halfway up as you can see, so I'll be taking those two plants out um, today. Now I'm, I can only assume that that's down to over watering basically they've been sitting in um, two damp conditions and that's caused the plant to uh, to have this fungal problem but uh, the ones that you know the plants that have sort of survived you know there's there's a reasonable amount of tomatoes I'm nowhere near uh, to what I normally get and the, the tomatoes seem to be a lot smaller than they have been in the past but you know if you compare that to say um, you know the you know the money makers that we've got on this side um, you know these have done considerably better <coughs> than than these, and I do honestly think that it's down to the um, the variety as opposed to um, the location. I know this side, you know the the uh, the the container in the ground on on this side is pretty much the same as this side. You know the this side's as damp as this, but uh, I wasn't here last week, so um, I left a friend uh, watering, and they possibly water too much but obviously I'd already had three plants to do this when I was watering so um, the one thing that I have had is um, slugs eating the tomatoes or, or I'm assuming it's slugs I don't know if you can see I've, I've left that one on at the back there but uh, you can see there's a there's a tomato here uh, and as you can see the top of it's been oh get the leaf out of the way the top of the tomato there has been eaten off um, and I'm pretty sure that's um, slug damage that's caused that but um, that's the only problems that we've had with the tomatoes the the cucumbers have done pretty well uh, I've had uh, I think it's 16 cucumbers this year so far um, this one there's one up here unfortunately these these just didn't um, come to anything I'm hoping that that'll grow on a bit more and we'll get some more cucumbers but 
as the weather's now turning, um, you know, I'm, I'm less likely to get more cucumbers to us here. But we have got plenty on. As you can see, there's some coming here. Uh, that one there's got sort of two thrown at the back there. So they're, they're sort of doing okay. These, these here, these are the um, birdhouse gourd plants that went in quite late, um, along with some weeds. Um, so I'm just leaving them to grow up here because I, I think if I put those outside they're not going to come to anything. Um, this is the um, fuchsia. I don't know what the variety is, I've got to be honest with you. But um, this is the, um, um, the hardy fuchsia that we struck from a cutting um, at the back end of last year. So all I've done basically is potted it on and let it grow. Um, what I could have done was stopped, um, stopped it, but what I wanted to do is I've, I've left it as a... a, a, as a main shoot like that because I wanted it to flower so I could see the flowers. If I you know if I cut it back and got it to more of a bush shape there was a chance it wouldn't have flowered. But as you can see you know the flowers have come out quite nicely and uh, I can now try to identify what variety that is. But uh, the one thing I just wanted to quickly say is if you get uh, with your fuchsia um, the this this little bulb at the back here will develop into seed. So as soon as the flower's finished, obviously this one has here, what you want to do is just take take that off from the main plant, re remove that part because that's going to take energy out of the plant. Um, and then you, you know that'll encourage the uh, the plant to to flower a little bit more. But that's the that's the greenhouse. Obviously the uh, the cayenne the cayenne pepper plant. I was hoping that might have sprung back into life, but uh, unfortunately it hasn't. Um, the grapevine is really the only other thing, um, as you can see. We have picked some grapes off. These are reasonably small still, uh, but what I did is I went along yesterday and uh, took off um, a few bunches um, just to take take down to the house and eat. And they are really nice, to be honest with you. Um, obviously they are small, but they're nice and sweet, and uh, they're, they're, they're quite pleasant eating, to be honest with you. But that's what the grapevine looks like. Um, we've got plenty of plenty of bunches of grapes as you can see um, along there so that's why I'm having to sort of dodge as I go in and out of the greenhouse but um, that's the that's the greenhouse for you outside um, because of the weather we've been having it's it's most certainly gone cooler now um, so things are starting to uh, either run to seed or die back a little bit so I've had to prop the comfrey up there it's not a pretty job but uh, this was all over the path the other day so I just needed to very quickly get that up out of the way. Um, the comfrey tea needs to be drained off again. Um, hopefully I'll get around to doing that at some point either today or tomorrow. Um, the uh, the hollyhock is pretty much gone over now. There's just a few left at the top. Uh, and this is uh, lemon balm and mint. Um, they've they've kind of started to go over as well so I'll, I'll cut these back before too much longer. Um, the oregano um, is gone into flower at the bottom there and uh, these these sort of mint plants here this is this is catmint here um, sage at the back and the rosemary um, are all looking reasonably sorry for themselves because of the weather we've been having uh, this is the um, the basil as you can see um, I had a bit of a weed out there's just a, still a couple of weeds at the back there but uh, it's been growing reasonably well so what I will be doing is harvesting this before too much longer and making some pesto but the one thing I have noticed is I'm getting this kind of rotting at the top there. So what I will do is cut that off later. Um, but I'm not quite sure what's caused that. But uh, anyway, that's the that's the basil. The second comfrey plant here um, is growing really well. I, that's something else I like to stake back the, there. The other day. I had to put this additional stake in there just to hold it back from the path. Um, but that again needs to be chopped back um, before too much longer. Um, the raspberries have grown really well, um, as you can see we're still getting raspberries, um, there's a bit of bindweed in there which is a constant battle really, but uh, that's, the, that's the raspberries. The asparagus, obviously all the seed has come um, quite nicely, so I will be saving a bit of that seed uh, to plant on um, later in the year, or the uh, part of next year. And then we've got the, um, this is the birdhouse gourd plant, I can't get through it because it's like a wilderness. And it's been chucking it down with rain all night, so uh, I'm not going to try and get up there. But as you can see, there's plenty of birdhouse gourds all over the plant. How many of these will actually form into, you know, fully grown fruits? I'm not quite sure. But uh, there's this one here and the one across the other side, which I'll show you when I get around there. But uh, they're growing really well. And here we've got the pear tree. 
and uh, I took a quick bit of footage of that the other day because I wanted to take the uh, the pairs off it because a few of them had dropped off but uh, I'll show that footage now. Okay just doing a quick shot of the uh, the pairs now I've had a few drop off I've just come back off holiday as you can see there's a few dropped off down here so I've been weeding all day uh, but you can see there's a few dropped off there so obviously they're more than ripe uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, picking these so this is basically the first fruit we've had off this tree since I put it in uh, last year, beginning of last year. So the the other pears are slightly, um, slightly soft. They're still hard, but you know you can feel them starting to, starting to give a little bit. So I'm going to be picking those. So I did originally have, um, I counted them. There was 19 pears. We've now got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on there. So I'm not sure where the others have gone. There's a few on the floor there which the ants have had. So unless the ants have completely devoured the others, uh, but those are the those are the pears. And along here, so it's all really overgrown in the last couple of weeks. We've had quite a lot of rain and uh, everything's gone mad. But uh, as you can see, the, the apple tree, uh, these apples are, aren't quite ready yet. Um, so I'll be, I'll be leaving them, so they'll be in the next video anyway, when I do a tour. But uh, the apples on the apple tree, they've still got a way to go. But uh, the pears, I'll be picking those now uh, before, the, uh, before the wind has them and the... Uh, You'll fall off. Okay, so moving on, uh, we've got the strawberries here, um, and all I've done is basically left them too. There's plenty of runners, so what I will do before too much longer is get in there with a few little pots um, and just put the um, put, put the runners in a pot so I can um, take them off as um, new plants so I can sort of fill this out a bit more. Um, some of the sunflowers have come out at the top here, as you can see, this one here is doing quite nicely. Uh, but they are quite small, to, to be honest with you. And the potatoes, uh, when I came back, uh, I came back on Saturday, uh, which was um, two days ago. Um, this was completely covered in weeds, so I've spent a, a few hours sort of tidying off this bit here. And I will start to dig up potatoes um, this week, as soon as I get a dry bit of weather. But uh, the weed over here was, was uh, well, you can see that bottom corner there, um, it was quite overgrown so I, I actually filled four um four bins with 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 weed off here and it was it was it, you know in the space of a week it had grown really quickly uh, because of the weather we've been having so that's the potatoes for you obviously i need to get these weeds out here as well i need to finish it off when the weather permits but uh, that's the potato patch so obviously i will be digging some up um over the next uh, week or so so i'll do a quick um, video on that when i dig them up the the onions have pretty much gone over now so what i need to do before they start rotting in the ground is um, pull all the onions up and get them drying so that's another job that's that's, uh, that's on the cards for the next week or so so i need to pull all the onions up or lift them basically um, you want to keep the roots on them as best you can so it's always best to put a fork under them and lift them out of the ground um, then turn them upside down to dry um, and uh, when I do that, I'll do a quick video so you can see. And then you leave them to dry for a couple of months until the um, until the um, they've all dried off. Then you can start tying them up or banging them up or whatever. So that's the onions. But the onions haven't done too badly. Uh, they're most certainly not the best crop of onions I've ever had. Um, but uh, all things considered, I don't think I've done too badly uh, with the onions this year. They're most certainly better than last year. Um, parsnips again, full of weed. Uh, it, it is. It has most certainly been the year of the weed this year. Uh, everybody's been saying that how, how much weed everybody's had. Uh, it's just been the right conditions really for the weeds to grow. But um, the parsnips are doing really well. I will be going through and taking the weeds out. Obviously when you're weeding round parsnip plants, what you don't want to do is pull the roots out of the, um, of the weeds um, if it's close to a parsnip plant, because what you don't want to do is disturb the root. So um, what you want to do is either, either snap it off um, at the ground or, or um, cut it off or whatever as opposed to actually pulling the whole um, you know weed root out because what you don't want to do is disturb the ground. So those are the parsnips. The, um, the sweet peas have done really well and as you can see they've gone over now. Uh, what I should have done was cut the flowers off as and when they finished but uh, I didn't because I didn't have the time so the they've run to seed and they've, they've, they've sort of finished now. If I would have cut off the um, flowers so they didn't form into seed, um, you know, they would have they would have been producing a lot more flowers now, um, but because the plant seeded, it's, it's, it's kind of finished for the season. But, uh, you know, on the upside of it, I've got plenty of seed for next year, so I'll be collecting some of the seed. 
Right, in here we've got um, the kale, so that's the Petrage kale and the Scottish kale. I've got quite a bit of aphid, um, this, this sort of black, black stuff you can see on the leaves here, that's, that's um, evidence of aphids. Um, so what I need to do is uh, get up here with um, some soapy water again and um, spray them with soapy water. The, this is the spinach here which is not doing too badly. I keep cutting up and cutting off the seed um, tops and giving those to the, uh, the chickens. Um, but um, as you can see, that because the weather we've been having, uh, you know, we've had um, um, pretty much all of the spinach beet has uh, run to seed. So, uh, you know, there's, there's three different lots, as you know, there's this one here, there's this one on this side, as you can see, that's running as well, to seed. And then there's, there's some in the other tunnel over there, um, and that's all um, running to seed as well, so, and there's plenty of weeds in there. But um, this is the um, calabrese, and as you can see, um, the caterpillars, I've done quite a bit of damage, I've been going through and checking for caterpillars. I've not seen any since I got back, but uh, the calabrese in here hasn't done very well at all. Um, not only because of the caterpillars, but the, you know, the plants haven't formed anywhere near as, as, as well as I would expect them to. And if when you see the ones in the, the other tunnel, you'll see what I mean, because they're considerably better. Um, pumpkins, I don't know if you can see, we've got one here. We've got a nice big one there. Um, and then, so they're still like a yellowy color. And if we go over here, you can see we've got a really nice big one there. Uh, there's one there, one over there. So there's plenty of, of um, pumpkins, and they're actually pushing the pushing the net in on the um, on the tunnel a little bit. But um, they're growing really well. I can't get up there at the minute because it's just that overgrown uh, with with pumpkin plants. I don't want to try and get up there with a the camera because I'll uh, basically damage the plants. So that's why I've shown you from here. But there's loads of pumpkins. I've got about at least seven pumpkins growing of a good size. So, uh, and as you can see, they're growing right up, right up the tunnel as well. But um, so that's the that's the second um, tunnel, Solly. At the end there, they're they're um, flower sprouts, um, and uh, they're growing all right. But they've not started to form the the little sort of sprout bits at the side yet. But um, they're they're still growing okay. So this is the first tunnel. Um, so this is the these are the courgette plants in here as you can see there's plenty of courgette so I'll be, I'll be giving the, the larger ones to the chickens uh, and obviously keeping the smaller ones for ourselves but I need to get up here but as you can see it's that it's that overgrown, it's like a jungle in there I need to get all these weeds out and um, tidy it up but this is just a massive growth at the moment uh, and as you can see as well, the the pumpkin, the pumpkin plants actually grown over the um, over the uh, the rhubarb as well. So there's there's loads of there's loads of uh, little little baby um, pumpkins all in the rhubarb as well. The rhubarb's coming on quite nicely. Um, as you can see, this is new growth here. So um, you, you know, at this time of year, sort of at the end of August, September time, you do get a second growth of. Um, the rhubarb but uh, as you can see this is like an absolute jungle at the moment um, so that's that's that uh, right in this second tunnel here I'll just quickly show you you have to excuse the weeds I've not got around to doing this bit yet but uh, the weeds are absolute now these are the calabrese um, in this and as you can see how much better these plants are now these also got attacked by caterpillars um, but as you can see they are so much better um, in here than the other tunnel so I'm not quite sure what's going on with the other tunnel what I will do is put some um, coffee and some uh, a bit of um, chicken manure around the bottom of them I think maybe just to bring them on a bit I think they're lacking something in the soil but um, and believe it or not here there's the row of um, swedes uh, but they've not this is a swede plant here they've not started to fatten up yet but there are swedes in here um, on this side, this is the spinach here, as you can see it's grown quite well, if you can see it amongst the weeds. Um, but as you can see, some of them are also going to seed. But uh, I have been picking a bit of spinach out of here. And then underneath this cage at the front here, we've got the, the beetroot. Um, what I need to do, again, is weed through here and then take these cages off. So uh, to expose the beetroot so you can actually see them. But uh, that's um, the second tunnel, but as you can see everything's 
completely overgrown and covered in weeds and it's amazing. When I went away uh, just over a week ago, um, there was hardly any weed at all in there. I'm not going to say there was none. You know, there was just the odd little bit here and there. Uh, and when I got back the other day, you know, when I saw this, I thought, blinking you know, this is this has grown really quickly. So, you know, the weeds of the weeds that you can see in here are pretty much grown within the space of a week. Right. So that's the that's the second tunnel. Um, round here, this is this is the uh, the um, calendulas are pretty much finished now. But I've I've just got the last few. So as soon as the last few are finished flowering, I'll I'll take all those out. Uh, the sunflowers. As you can see, they're all forming heads now. A little beetle sat in there. Look. I think you can see him. Uh, is it a beetle or is it a fly? Oh, no, it's a fly. Uh, but as you can see, the, um, they are forming the heads now. Uh, these have been blown about a little bit, so I, I've been up and tied them up, but I do need to come up again. Every, every time I come up here, I find that the ties have come off, so I perhaps need to put something a bit more robust on. Um, this flower is pretty much finished now. Uh, this was a nice flower. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll cut that off this week and uh, dry that for seed next week. Uh, uh, for seed next year, sorry. And this one's pretty much finished now. So I can take those out. But there I've got a second second flower coming. Uh, or second lot of flowers coming. So that was obviously the main one. And I've got these other little ones here coming. So what I'll do is I'll take that main flower off and then let the other flowers um, uh, bloom. Right, uh, as you can see this one here, doing really well and there's a, there's, a, there's a bee in there hiding away from this nasty weather we're having but um, so those are the the sunflowers the the run of beans have done really well as you can see there's absolutely loads of them um, now before I went on holiday I stripped pretty much every bean off these plants uh, chopped them all up and put them in the uh, the freezer uh, the ones that we didn't eat so there's I've got 80 I think there's 89 pound of um, beans frozen now, just just runner beans. Um, and obviously, as you can see, there's loads more coming. So these are these are um, need to be picked this week, really, and uh, also processed. So my freeze is absolutely full of beans. Uh, and this side here is exactly the same story. You know, there's 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 beans everywhere. Um, so the beans have done really well this year. It has been a bumper crop for uh, for beans, um, both both run of beans and also um, the, the climbing beans which you'll see in a moment. Right, so this is the other side of the pot as you can see. Um, Parsnips are growing really well. Um, I just need to get those weeds out and then uh, they'll be uh, they'll be fine. Obviously we're going to get all these onions out but the, the onions have not done too badly. There's a reasonable size on there. I have pulled out a number of onions already um, and, and ate them uh, but there are some, some quite nice sized ones and in there amongst the weeds but um, those are the onions obviously the potatoes here these are the weeds now this corner wasn't that bad this was the best corner of the lot really um, as you can see the uh, the weed here uh, you can just imagine how many weeds I took off um, from that top bit there but uh, <coughs> that's part of gardening you need to deal with the weeds but uh, as you can see the some of the potatoes are starting to work their way to the top now so what I need to do is get these potatoes out the one biggest tip I can say with potatoes, uh, particularly this time of year, and if it's wet, is you need to keep the weeds down. You need to get all the weeds out. Uh, reason being is, um, if you have weeds on the... You want to keep the ground as dry as possible now. Uh, obviously, there's nothing you can do about the rain, but if you've got weeds on the ground like here, that's going to hold the moisture on the ground. If you hold the moisture on the ground, that's the ideal conditions for slugs and stuff to thrive. Um, and obviously what the slugs are going to do is eat your potatoes so what you want to do is clear the ground like I've done here uh, if, if you're not going to dig the potatoes up immediately and then what that will do is it'll the ground will dry out that much quicker and it'll prevent the slugs getting on there and basically eating your potatoes for you or at least cut it down this is the second um, um, birdhouse gourd plant as you can see it's, it's gone completely balmy it's gone all over the all over the uh, the framework here and all up over there. I don't, I don't know if you can see, but there are those are the apples in there. Those were on a um, the clip I put on earlier, but uh, as you can see, there's there's, uh, there's apples in there um, doing quite nicely. Um, not picked those yet. They they need another month or so on the plant, I think. 
but uh, that's what the that's what the second birdhouse gourd plant looks like. But there are there's got to be 30 or 40 birdhouse gourd um, fruits on there. These are the these are the male flowers here. There's lots of male flowers, and then obviously the female female flowers are um, the ones with the shorter shorter stem. I like I like this one there. As you can see, that's a nice short with the with the with the fruit at the end, if you like. Uh, these ones are sort of completely straight. Those are the male flowers. Uh, there you go. There's a female. Let's see with the fruit behind it, and then a male. Basically, is one of these where it's you know long and thin. So that's the that's the birdhouse gourds. As you can see, there are the plants absolutely covered with uh, with fruit. So I'm not quite sure how big they're going to get, but um, you know, there's lots of little ones up here as well. But so uh, they're doing quite well. The the sunflower there's only one of the sunflowers actually in no oh, sorry two of them actually in flower up here um, so these ones here have yet to, to form the heads but I'm not expecting these to be too big to be honest with you but uh, we'll have to see I'm holding out judgment for that but uh, I'm not expecting them to be too big right um, the weeds continue here uh, that's where the uh, uh, Oloco is believe it or not um, amongst these weeds here it's just completely overgrown it's gone absolutely balmy. And then that's the uh, the yacon, uh, which is now about seven foot high. So that's 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 really loving it there. But um, right, and then these are the the climbing beans. As you can see, there's 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 lots and lots of climbing beans. Now, I picked uh, four kilos, four, sorry, five kilos yesterday. As you can see, there's still there's still sort of loads on. Now the ones that have got to kind of this big, uh, really they've gone too far. So I'll leave those on for seed. Uh, ones that are kind of this big, they're ideal for cutting and um, freezing and stuff. So I'll be coming up again, probably later today or maybe tomorrow, um, to pick. You know, those ones are okay to pick, uh, but anything that's starting to look sort of like that, looking looking a bit woody, and most certainly if you start to see the beans forming on the inside, you may as well leave that on the plant and let and, and keep that for seed for next year. Uh, so that's the that's the beans, and then. Uh, we're back to the beginning, so that's what the that's what the allotment looks like on the 21st of August. Okay, sorry, I didn't show the second greenhouse. Uh, so we've got plenty of cucumbers coming in here, as you can see. Uh, nice big ones there, and that goes up uh, and along. This one here, we've got um, a nice little one forming there, but the top part of the plant doesn't seem to be growing anywhere near as well. Now this this cucumber plant here, this is the one that got snapped off, if you remember. Um, it got snapped off there, so all of this here uh, is grown in the last couple of weeks, and uh, that's that's grown really well. The the jalapenos, as you can see, are doing really well. We've got lots of nice, big, fat um, jalapenos growing, so we'll have a good uh, harvest them. So what I will do is wait for them to basically get to the biggest, and then what I'll do um, is is chop all those up and then put them in a bag and freeze them, and then I can just use them as and when during the uh, the winter so obviously you know we can use some fresh but because we've got so many as you can see these ones here um, you know I'm not going to use all of these in one go so what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll take off these larger ones that that one's pretty much finished now um, take that off chop it all up um, and then put that in the um, put that in the freezer um, right I've had a bit of a problem with these peppers on it. So these are the sweet peppers. Um, and unfortunately, by the look of it, that's a slug that's done that. So a slug's got in here and it's eaten the top off the pepper. So I'm a bit disappointed really because, y you know, that plant's got one pepper on it and a, a slug's at it. Um, this one here um, has got one pepper on it there. So that's still, that's still growing. Um, this plant here, uh, another sweet pepper plant hasn't got any fruits on it at all yet um, and these here also they've got flowers on but they've not actually started to fruit yet um, but I was just just disappointed that that one there was was doing quite nice before I went on when I got back I was quite good to see a slug had eaten the side off it but um, still um, I've just put a bit of dry uh, compost in here I don't know if you can see um, it's obviously been watered from the bottom, but I'll put dry compost on there. So if a stug got on here, it'd um, it, it it wouldn't get through that very well. 
So I've, I've basically put that dry compost on the top there just to prevent the try and find the culprit to um, to who's eaten the um, uh, the pepper. But uh, anyway, so that's the that's the second greenhouse. So I hope this episode was of some use to you. Please don't hesitate to put a comment you've got below, and I'll always get back to you. And I'll see you on the next episode of Tim's Love Garden. <laughs>